Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I have four children ages 11, 7, 2, and 3 months old. And today I'm excited to share with you my favorite reading program of all time. Alright, so a lot of you have been waiting for this video when I put out on my community tab that um, I was going to talk about some curriculum. This is one that a lot of people were excited for. So I started all about reading with my oldest who was in second grade at the time and he had been a struggling reader. We had done um, we had done My Father's World Kindergarten Phonics, First Grade Phonics. We had done The Good and the Beautiful Kindergarten the older version and he just was taking quite a while to get the phonics concepts and even when he would get them most of those were spiral and so it would immediately jump to the next thing he needed something that was very much mastery based and that is where all about reading came in so all about reading is based on the orton gillingham method and basically from my understanding of this you learn certain phonics concepts at certain times and so for me this made all the sense in the world because it makes sense to me to learn all of the short vowels first it makes sense to learn short vowel consonant vowel consonant words you know consonant vowel consonant consonant things like that like you know mat you know right um or mac or different things like that and so you're learning these different things at different times and you're waiting i don't even think you learn long vowels until almost the second book of this curriculum or at the very very end of the first curriculum and so it just makes all the sense in the world to my brain and my kids have really thrived this with this my younger son i started in kindergarten with him i started sing spell read and write thinking that all about reading um, would just be a little bit you're because you're doing different things every day but it's very much a process and you're doing you know you're learning these words using your letters and then you're doing an activity and then you're doing your cards and then you know you're doing um your practice pages and so i just felt like it would be a little bit too redundant for him and so i also thought it might work move at too slow of a pace for him because he has shown to be a little bit of someone who can pick up things very quickly and he is flying through all about reading but we started sing spell reading right in kindergarten and by the middle of kindergarten i started bringing out all about reading level one and he loved it and he has thrived with it and he will be going into second grade and he's seven years old and he is starting level three before we even finish first grade so he is just absolutely flying through it and he loves it and the thing that i love so much about all about reading is that you can really customize it to your child so a lot of the things you know you can play different games i saw a video from katie at life in the mundane and she did a video where she uses the cards to play a game i will link that down below and um you can we have done different games i actually have a video here on my channel showing where the practice pages were becoming very overwhelming for him and so i would print them out or you could write them out and there is a monster that you can print off their website there's also a puppy that you can print off their website and they feed the words to them as they say it so it's very i've seen so many different all about reading hacks um where people try different things and it works so so well for their children we have all of the levels levels one through four my main reason for being hesitant about starting it is because we did not have a ton of money when we first started homeschooling and i didn't really want to spend because i think brand new this curriculum is about a hundred dollars give or take a little bit more a little bit less i can't remember i will put the price right here so you guys know exactly how much it is um currently as i make this video but I just was very worried about it but i'm so glad that we did it it has been probably a favorite curriculum in our family it's probably the only one i'm ever going to use for reading again and it just works for so many different learning styles it works for so many different students no matter their abilities and um, we just really love it um, but it did the price did kind of scare me i was able to find levels one and two used on ebay i feel like it's so easy to find level one used on ebay they're like a dime a dozen on there levels three and four i purchased through the it was this outlet 
where they were no longer making the black and white version of the curriculum and so I got those brand new at a discount um, but I'm sure you could go on so many buy sell trade homeschool groups to get them used um, you know if a friend a homeschooling friend has one you know maybe you could borrow it and try it and see if your children like it it is a solid investment especially the way that we use it I'm going to share that with you in just a moment but a lot of people will let their kids color on the activity pages and things like that and I don't because I knew that I wanted to be able to reuse it over and over again so I will show you the way that we have it set up but it has worked so well for two children and I'm very confident that my other two children will be able to use it again in the future so absolutely love all about reading I'm excited to show you inside they are basically all the same concepts as I said you do your little t letter tiles so it's kinesthetic you do your cards so it's visual you know um, and you have activities and different things like that so it's very very fun and the kids also have readers they really enjoy those stories so I am going to show you guys all of the different aspects of it I will do a couple flip 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 throughs of the different levels. Okay, so I am moving over my son from level two to level three. He is going to be starting level three this coming week. So I am just gonna go ahead and show you my setup while I'm getting everything together. So when you first purchase this curriculum, it will have, if you buy it brand new, if you buy it used, it may already be done for you. But you will get your teacher's manual and then you will get the activity book. So the activity book you can also get um, free extra progress charts on their website. Um, they have a read aloud record. So then we have our practice sheets. There's lots of fun different ways to do these. I actually have a short on my channel that I will link down below that shows kind of a fun way that we do it. I've seen tons of other people use so many different ideas. There's so many fun hacks to get your kids excited about this. They have warm-up sheets for each um, book. Now, we try to do those as much as possible, but sometimes if it's Friday or we've been sick or whatever, we might just read the book and kind of skip the actual lesson and just actually read the story. But most of the time we try to do that because it will just um, give more exposure to the words that you learned. Um, but you will get in these as well the activities and you will have to pull them out and you will have to put them together now it is a bit tedious it does some take some time I used to do about six weeks at a time but now that I did it once I don't ever have to do it again and what I ended up doing was I would cut them out and then I would put each lesson in a sheet protector so I think this one kind of got lost because this is lesson one right here so I have about half of the um, level three activities in here and I don't let my kids color on them or anything so that I can reuse them with all of my children. And when we're done, I will kind of go through, make sure that all of the activities are matched up. I just switched over the cards. I made sure all of the cards were in order. I made sure all the cards I was putting away were in order. Um, we have our little charts in here for level three and I will just keep this in a binder on our shelf and then when we get to the point where we need new activity sheets I keep this in our garage this is just like the file folders and so we have all about reading level one two three and four is still actually over there in a binder I never did get that put away um, from when my oldest did it um, so it's just been chilling in the bin. But I got these, I think they're called milk crates. They're from Target. I don't remember how much I paid, but it wasn't very expensive. And so I have these in here. Um, and then when I need more activities, I'll just come and get the rest, pull these out, put them in my binder, and swap them out. I also keep our readers in here. I keep one reader up here at a time, obviously, to save space. Um, so here's the second one. I already pulled the first one out. I keep the little cards. So I'm gonna go into my book and see which cards I need for my board. We used to have a board that we just kept on our wall, but since we, since I got pregnant with my youngest, um, we have just been doing school um, like upstairs and we move around between the dining room and the living room and my room. So um, I just put it on a board that we can move around. So um, I will have to add the new ones of those. So also in this bin, I keep all of the different cards. I have them sorted by level. So we have level four here 
and I just keep them all in here. It's not super organized, but it's organized enough for me. And then I keep in a second milk crate, I just keep um, the teacher's guides and the activity books. I also have my all about spelling stuff in here as well. And I we keep our cards in here. You will get the cards. Again, you will have to um, pop them all out. Um, and, but then once you do it once, you don't have to do it for any more of your kids, which has been really nice. And they come with these. And so you just do them that way. So that is how I keep it all organized. That is how I get the most money out of it. I bought, like I said, I bought most of these used. Um, but... I still had to cut everything out and do all of that. I don't think the people actually used it. Um, so this is how I keep it organized. I keep my um, board with me. I keep my binder with me, my cards with me, one of the readers, the activity book, and the teacher's guide. And then everything else I keep in storage. And then when it's time to swap it out, I just swap everything out and put that year away and bring a new year out again. Okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit of inside of these. So this is level one, the blue one, level two, level three, and level four. And that is that one. They are essentially all the same in the way that they flow. So I will show you inside level one. So something that I think is really important that you need to know about All About Reading is that each lesson should not take more than 20, you should only spend 20 minutes per day. Now, sometimes my son will get done so fast. My oldest used to take way longer than 20 minutes and my youngest sometimes can get done so fast that sometimes we will just do extra reading from little readers that he has. But um, it says lessons often take more than one day to complete. And that is totally fine. We spent, sometimes we spent three or four days in a lesson and he still got it done super quickly. So, um, and he understands all of it. It's not like we're just rushing through it and he doesn't get any of it. Um, it also says in addition, read aloud to your students for 20 minutes per day. We do that during our read aloud time and all of that stuff, so we're not too big on like following it according to the All About Reading. Um, this will tell you everything you need to know. So for this lesson, you will need phonogram cards one through four, word cards one through three, blast off to reading page nine, and your progress chart. So it will also tell give you a preview of what you're going to be doing as the teacher. So when it is talking about the phonogram cards, it is talking about these yellow cards and they will tell you what level of all about reading they are, which lesson and which phonogram card, which is really nice um, because sometimes you're like, you know, you don't know what lesson you're on, you just know which phonogram card you need. Um, the word cards are going to be these green cards right there. The activity sheets are in here. And you will need, for us, we keep our activity sheets in the binder, like I said, and then our practice sheets are right here. So, what you will first do when you are learning a new sound is you will start with the sound cards. So the phonogram cards, the yellow ones. Okay, and then you will practice using the letter tiles. So you'll pull the tiles out, you'll explain them, what sounds they make as well, and then you will do the first one, you'll demonstrate. Right, so you'll add them all. The vowels are red and the consonants are blue. So you would build that and do map and teach them ma, ap, map, right? And then you will switch them out and then it'll usually give you, like you just play change the word quite a few times. Then you will usually complete an activity page. Then you will move to your cards, your green cards, your word cards and then you will mark it in your progress chart. It also says down here to read a poem or story, but again, we just do our read aloud time when it works for us. So the same thing each time. Now, when you're reading a story, when you're reading a story, it's a little bit different. So you're going to do your warm up sheet pages and then you're, you're gonna need your reader for that. So you will preview the story lessons 
you will review your cards. We review ours every day. I'm not sure if it says to do that every day, but we do until they can master them, which means that um, they can say the word, recall the word within about three seconds. Then we do our activity. We have our warm up sheet for the story. Um, we teach the vocabulary, so they'll pretty much always have a picture on the warm up sheet and they'll kind of explain them. And then you are going to read it and you will ask some questions while you're reading. So, um, while you're reading, it's you kind of want to have your teacher's guide nearby or kind of preview the questions ahead of time so that you know what to do. And then again, you will read a story or poem and mark your progress chart. So that is basically the same thing that you do throughout the whole thing. So I wanted to quickly show you in each level kind of where you're starting out and where you're finishing. So this is level one, lesson two. This is when you actually start reading words. So you have your leap words, which is what they call them. They have a picture of a frog. That's your leap word. It doesn't follow the rules. So the is your leap word for this lesson. And then you're learning the short A sound, so a. Ah. So there are your words. You do the actual words, you do the phrases, you do sentences. Now, as the program gets more complex, these lists get longer and longer and longer. With my oldest, we kind of flew through the first two because some of it was review for him. With my younger son, it was all brand new to him, so we took our time with these. Sometimes we would do like a row and then we would do a few phrases and then a few sentences. But this is what the first lesson looks like in level one. And this is the last um, new lesson. So you're learning um, where vowels say their names. So he, e, so, o, right? So, <laughs> so, uh, new words are up here, phrases, and the sentences. So. It's not super complex in the first level. Let's show the second level. So level one is kind of review words. These are pretty much all the words that they learned in the other one. This is really good if you um, kind of take a few weeks off in between. We are just going to jump right into it, but I still am probably going to have him review the words. He should be able to do these fairly quickly. This is a different, this is probably more like the first actual lesson where they learn. So. I think R and U are their leap words for this one, and then they're learning a little bit um, longer of short vowel sounds. So this is the last lesson in level two, and these are the words that they just did. So they just learned the O, W, and O, U say ow. Um, so this is a very good example of it might take several days. He actually flew through this, um, but in the beginning when he was first kind of learning a little bit longer of words it would take him several days to get through this so we might do this row of words and then these phrases and then this page of sentences and then the next day we would do this row of words this phrases and this page of sentences and then when we're all done we might pick a couple challenge words and some compound words and so that is the last one in level two. For level three, you are starting out. It looks like you're doing A, Y, and A, I say A. So this is the first lesson we're actually going to be doing next week. So there are your new words, your sentences, more words, and then you have your first story. So that is the first lesson in level two. Here's the last lesson in level three where you're learning new words. So as you can see, it gets quite a bit harder towards the end of level three. This is kind of where you're learning longer words that still follow certain rules. And I think level four is more of words that don't necessarily follow phonics rules. Okay, so I guess I have the color edition <laughs> of these books. And as I recall, these got even harder to pull out. So hopefully you guys don't have that same problem if you buy them new now. So these, this is the practice sheet. These are your new words at the beginning of level four. 
They're teaching um, a little bit more in depth of decoding skills because the words are getting even longer. All right, and then this is the last lesson of new words that you're learning in level four. But um, this, I believe they have um, different, like they have French words and things like that. French origin words, um, Spanish origin words, things like that um, towards the last one. My oldest really struggled with these last few lessons. Um, so they took way longer, but level four is definitely towards the end, definitely more of a third, fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth grade level, um, that of words that kids are learning. So that is the end of all about reading level four. And then you're done with this program. You're able to move on to something else. You're done with phonics. Um, you can move to a reading program or a different language arts program or just reading books for fun. Okay guys, so that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed getting a look inside at All About Reading. Again, it is one of our absolute favorite curriculums at our home school. I hope you guys will try it and let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Do you love All About Reading? Have you ever tried it? Let me know. Make sure you are subscribed and you give this video a thumbs up so I know that you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!